everybody. Uh, this is objection handler number four for common, you know, common things uh, things said that to sort of throw into great doubt that ADHD is a possible causal factor for a person's problems. Um, and just to say a couple of things. One, I'm, I will return. In fact, uh, there the next videos that I'll be making today are um, will have MBTI involved in them, as is usual for this channel. And then after that, I intend to return to my uh, usual stuff, where um, this channel is devoted to MBTI-based uh, uh, topics, um, or related topics. So it's just that while we're on the subject of ADHD, I'm like, well, I got a lot to say here, so I'm gonna get some of it out, and then I'm gonna be doing more of my material that is uh, themed around that for with another channel. So, um, all right, so this is another one. This is, this is a big one. This is a really big one, and a very understandably big one is people saying, discounting the possibility that ADHD may play a role in someone's difficulties because they believe that uh, other things going on with for that person on the mental health level or the neurological level uh, account for the problems. But uh, here's the thing, we can actually determine this. Um, ADHD is a very distinct mental disorder with a, a syndrome with a very distinct pattern of presentation that does separate it clearly from a bunch of other things. If you are doing a, uh, an, a thorough enough investigation into um, all the different circumstances and symptoms and uh, life history of that person, um, it's not as hard to define or differentiate, I think, as most people worry that it is. Um, and I should say right here, I should have said right at the beginning as well. Um, by the way, I am just a lay person, okay? I'm a lay person who is uncommonly informed about ADHD, and uh, but I am not I am not a licensed practitioner of any kind. So anything I say is an opinion piece here, and please take it as such, okay? Um, it's no substitute for consulting a, a professional in these matters, an informed professional, I would underline, but you know. All right. Uh, here's the other thing. This per uh, it's pertinent to say here that um, I'm looking to become a psychotherapist, and I recently attended uh, an intensive uh, two-day workshop about integrative treatment for ADHD and also for uh, um, treatment dilemmas, or sorry, assessment. Excuse me, assessment dilemmas in ADHD, and it was uh, led by experts, clinical experts in the field, and research experts in the field. Um, and it was aimed at an audience of mainly psychotherapists, uh, but also there were some counselors and other people involved in mental health there and uh, who wanted to learn more about the disorder. So this is where I'm getting some of this stuff, um, as well as just my own research. And again, if people want references, I'll, I'll give them to you. Absolutely. If you're interested enough to look this stuff up yourself, I'll, you know, if you try and find it yourself and you can't, I will try and, I will try and help you find it. Uh, all right, finally we get to objection number four. So yeah, that, that this has actually been caused, you know, it, you know, because ADHD couldn't possibly be um, a factor in the problems that so-and-so is experiencing because A, uh, ADHD doesn't exist, of course, and uh, number two, that uh, it can be accounted for by other things. Well, this is, this is understandably um, a common thing, especially considering the wall-to-wall -wall just massive ignorance as to even the fact that ADHD can exist in adults, let alone what it looks like in adults, let alone what the effects are and how serious and pervasive those effects are, those damaging effects on such a person's life. Uh, there's just so much confusion and misinformation and, oh, it just seems endless sometimes, you know, when I think about it. Um, and here's the other thing that really does complicate uh, seeing ADHD for what it is. It's one of many, many, many factors that, that make it hard for a lot of people to see. And that is that uh, comorbidity is the norm. Psychiatric comorbidity is the norm in people who have ADHD. 80% um, of the adults who get diagnosed in adulthood, at the time of diagnosis in adulthood, 80% of those have at least one other psychiatric comorbidity going on at that time. Uh, very often it is an anxiety disorder or it's major depression and or it's, it's addiction, some sort of active addiction problem. Um, those are very, three very common ones that show up in this population. So that can definitely complicate the, the picture and make, make things difficult to, make the ADHD difficult to, to appreciate 
you know, how it's contributing to the uh, health problems of this person. Um, so consider this. Here are a couple of stats that blew my mind coming from these uh, workshops I attended. Um, just to give you an idea of just how, how common that is. Um, if you were to take all of the mood disorders as a, and, and put them into one, as a, consider them as a unit, as a group, 38% um, of the people in that group also have ADHD. A, an extremely small percentage of those people who have comor comorbid ADHD, which is complicating and worsening their, their life course outcomes with those other um, problems, mental health problems, um, have their ADHD recognized, let alone treated in any way. It's, it's a disaster. That's my opinion, but I, I think that it's a disaster. Um, also, what I, the stats that I came across in these presentations was that the, I guess the, those that have any like solid data on the matter would say that about one in 10 uh, addicts, alcoholics addicts, uh, also have ADHD, which is complicating that problem as well. And it's going both, you know, the ADHD is definitely contributing heavily to making it very difficult for them to uh, resist impulses for one thing and to stay clean um, and a host of other things. Uh, when that stat came out though, I'll tell you that that room full of clinicians, all there was big like, whoa, there was a big sort of objection sound coming out of them. And, and the speaker said, yeah, I know. I, I think that's really low as well. Um, so anecdotally speaking, based on the reaction of those clinicians, but also what I've seen in my life, I know, um, I, I know at least 27 people who have it for sure, have been properly diagnosed or have a lot of the symptoms and think they have it. Um, and I think they have it, you know, based on what I've seen and, and what they tell me about their lives. Um, you know, there, there are a great, I would say it's much higher than that. I would, I'm, I'm getting this purely anecdotal, so maybe it's not even worth considering at all. But based on what I see, I think it's way higher than one in 10. I think it's closer to like one in four active addicts have ADHD in the background, which is really complicating the addiction problems. Like, mad and nobody is seeing it and nobody who's trying to look after the person or help that person clinically is taking it is doing anything about the ADHD aspect of it and it's a disaster it's a disaster and it's undermining all the other therapeutic interventions for that person the fact that they also have ADHD that is completely unrecognized and untreated going on at the same time as other things uh, here's another shocker a, a whopper shocker here was that um, of those of patients who have an anxiety disorder, uh, apparently 47%, if you consider all the different anxiety disorders and, and all the people who have that and put them into one group, 47% of that group have 47%, let me repeat, nearly half of them have ADHD and very, very few are getting any treatment for that disorder, which is complicating their anxiety disorder like mad. Because of course, if your executive functioning is poor, your the ability to sort and organize and prioritize and defer attention and put attention over here instead and uh, self-organize and so on mentally, uh, that's a big, big, big problem and a chronic problem in ADHD. Then of course, your, you know, your thoughts are gonna be going all over the damn place. And, and perhaps if you have an anxiety disorder and it's going to places you don't want you know, that, that are making things worse for you as far as your anxiety disorder is concerned. So I also learned at the workshop that the, the stats for this were, um, that I received were uh, that those who have generalized anxiety disorder, that group, 8% of those, um, there's data to indicate that they have ADHD also. 8.9% uh, of those with panic disorder, so nearly one in 10, uh, also have ADHD probably not being dealt with whatsoever in these days. Um, those who have OCD, it's much lower, but it's uh, someone had the data on 2.7% of that population. Um, and I, the, the thing was, the slides were going by so fast, I was taking notes as fast as my little hand could do, even with cramping, and I, I couldn't get the exact uh, percentage on this, but this was emphasized by both the presenters at my this workshop I attended, and they said that there's a huge, there's a very substantial um, correlation statistically between those who have social anxiety disorder in particular 
and also have uh, ADHD complicating that and in the background and probably unrecognized and untreated. So I don't, I don't have the percentage on that, but uh, they said basically what these clinicians, these experts in the field of ADHD, what they were saying was, you know, speaking to the psychotherapist, they were saying, if you have any clients who have social anxiety disorder, um, also those who have uh, relapsing dysthymia, screen them for ADHD now, screen them yesterday for ADHD because the likelihood that the, the likelihood is quite substantial that they also have ADHD and uh, not the majority of them but a very substantial number of them and chances are their ADHD is not being treated whatsoever and it's making everything worse so that's I think that should be interesting right if you're interested in mental health at all okay uh, I'm going to do part two about this one, number four, um, where I'm going to go into some differential diagnoses based on a very, a very good source, and uh, we're going to I'm going to talk about anyway. I'll talk about some other disorders, some features of of that um, that are often attributed to other disorders other than ADHD, but that in fact are not um, are distinct for ADHD. Um, but most people don't know that, including most doctors. So. All right, coming up next.